managers, administrators, owners are surprised and even shocked sometimes by some of the messaging that's being used, things that prospective patients are being told, or even processes that are being followed or used. And a lot of times they're unaware of what's actually happening with different team members in their own practice. Welcome to Success Confidentials. Nine minutes every week that'll level up your practice. If you're a healthcare visionary obsessed with patient experience, team culture, marketing, and growth, you're in the right place. We are too. We're Lauren and Christine, the patient whispers. <laughs> we worked together for four years as leaders in a real premium practice. We did not play in the traditional healthcare sandbox and believe human emotions drive all success and it really really worked we grew our cash pay practice and averaged 60 percent year over year and on social media we grew our followers from 1,000 to 14,000 in just two years generating millions in annual revenue from social media alone so now we're out here sharing what made us wildly successful so you can be too let's have some fun and <laughs> let's dive in <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Success Confidentials. Today, we're talking about what's actually happening and being said to your patients during their journey into your practice. Specifically, our premium patients that are considering a cash pay product or service. So what we really mean by this is the protocol, process, messaging that's being used or the lack thereof. When a person either calls, fills out a web form, DMs us, what happens? What are we communicating to that person? And then also when they turn into a patient and they decide to come in for a consultation or have a procedure done with us, or even after the procedure, if we're asking them maybe for a review, what is that messaging and who is saying it? This is so incredibly important to have a clear map and messaging because without it, our patient experiences are not consistent. And it's really hard, if not impossible, to onboard new hires mm -hmm. quickly, effectively, and efficiently where they're caught up to speed and maintain that consistent standard of excellence in our patient's journey because we're not really creating accountability or a standard for them to follow. We perform secret shopper assessments all the time. It's one of the ways we support practices and we kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. It's so critical to uncover really important gaps in our processes. It also is never fun to be on the receiving end and get the results mm -hmm. of a secret shopper because it almost always uncovers something that we can improve in a practice, which at the end of the day is really great. We went through that process ourselves many times in practice just to get that fresh perspective. A lot of times what happens is we reveal our results and managers, administrators, owners are surprised and even shocked sometimes by some of the messaging that's being used, things that prospective patients are being told, or even processes that are being followed or used. And a lot of times they're unaware of what's actually happening with different team members in their own practice. Typically this happens because the upper level managers assume that the new hires are being brought up to speed or maybe at one point in the new hire training, they were establishing their role, but it kind of got lost in translation or on the whole other end of the spectrum, there was never a clear protocol, process, communication in their role. So no matter what category they fall in, they think there is a clear process and procedure being communicated to everyone that's hired and being brought up to speed, but there isn't, or people are forgetting and losing it as they go on in their job. Yeah. And sometimes there was one established, but mm -hmm. we all know in a real practice, things change and evolve. Mm -hmm. I think that's when we see processes break down is over months or years, little things change here and there. And whatever was set up in the first place didn't continue to evolve with changes and updates, mm -hmm. which is why everyone would laugh at me in practice because something would change. And I, the first thing I'd say is, did we update the protocol? <laughs> and they'd be like, yes, we updated the protocol, Christine, <laughs> because we have to maintain consistent standards mm -hmm. and clarity is king. And I think even on the point of clarity is that everyone else in the practice, even if their point didn't change, if someone mm -hmm. else's role did change, it needs to be communicated as a big picture so everyone's brought up to speed and knows what each patient is learning in either the point before them or the point after them to make sure all boxes are checked. As always, we leave you guys with actionable takeaways from today's conversation to go and make a difference in your practice. 
For years, our blueprint in practice followed this pattern of first starting by mapping out the entire patient journey, all the way from impression online to becoming a patient and what that looks like even after post-op. And list out every patient touch point and human interaction. Mm -hmm. What should happen when, what should be communicated to patients, what are the FAQs? How do we answer the questions patients are asking in a consistent way? Looking through it all through the eyes of our patient. What are their fears? What are their hesitations? What are their concerns? Or we can be really proactive. Then the key is to document it. It can be simple. It does not have to be this big manual. I think we overcomplicate things. It can literally be a Word document with bullet points written out in a shared space where we can easily update it as protocols and processes change and then to communicate it. And get feedback from your team, your patients, refine, improve it, and keep it up to date. If we can help you with anything related to today's topic, use the link to schedule a free 30-minute synergy session just for new practices. For our existing practice clients, you already know where to find us. Now we want to hear from you. What resonated? What other topics are hot for you right now? We want to know all about it in the comments. We're just a comment away, so if you have any questions, we personally respond to all comments and DMs. If you're not subscribed yet, make it easy on yourself to see new episodes and reference topics that are helpful by hitting the subscribe button.